school call. Oh. Hey, hey guys, welcome to our very spooky version of Trail Talk Halloween special. Yes, we're very glad you could join us today. <laughs> you have to excuse me. <laughs> It's something about my David Pumpkins shirt and my little shiny witch hat has <laughs> got me in it's the got yeah. her in the Halloween spirit. Halloween spirit. So we As promised, you can tell we are though. Yes, we are. Look at how highly decorated we are today. We're very excited. Thanks for joining us on Trail Talk. Um, so uh, it's that time of year. It is, and uh, we the do, leaves are turning. Mm -hmm. The weather turned off cool today. Yes. Yeah, it, it does feel a little more like Halloween than it more has. fall like, although it's going to be 75, you know, on for the weekend. We'll so what we can get, them. you know, that's why we're going all in today. <laughs> we're taking full we're taking advantage it while we can. of this cooler weather. So we promise we're going to go over some Halloween safety tips. We have a very cute little book that we're going to share with you guys. But first, we're going to go over the origin, the, the beginning. History. We're going back to the beginning of Halloween. The, the, the origin story. The origin story. The, yes, the backstory. There of we Halloween, go. There we go. Which it's on the calendar, October 31st. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those um, day, uh, like the fourth Thursday. Yeah, that changes every year. It's always October 31st, although this year in Duncan, the trick or treating and trunk or treats and all those things are happening on the 30th. Correct. On that Saturday. So there are some exceptions to where, you know, cities will yeah. choose to do it on different days. Right. But the 31st is coming. actually, you know, that was a terrifying buffalo rampaging through the Heritage Center. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, October 31st. So, um, the tradition is that it's associated with an ancient Celtic festival called Samhain. Samhain. I, if I had a good, if um, you were to see the word, you I, would not think that's how right, it's pronounced. Right. But that is. If I had a better Irish accent or had my, you know, ability to speak like a druid, fine tuned, I would probably say that better. But Samhain is the how you would pronounce it. Yeah. Um, and it's associated with, on the Celtic calendar, November 1st was the first day of their new year. So October 31st would be the day that they would think about all the people who had died that year. Right, like they're all Hallows Eve. Mm, right, yes. And so they, they would reminisce, but because they were um, a a religion of uh, like superstition and mm -hmm. ritual and things like that, they would try to kind of conjure up those the spirits yeah. of the people who had died they lost. the year before. And um, <clears throat> so a lot of the um, traditions that you associate with Halloween, costumes, um, jack-o'-lanterns, uh, gatherings all those things kind of evolved from, from that from this but it took a while <clears throat> yeah it didn't just happen oh we're going to start celebrating right it was yeah. it was several hundreds hundreds of thousands hundreds yeah, of hundreds years of years yes um you know um it's not associated with a religious practice mm -hmm. no you know no. now it's just a kind of a community-wide fun activity activity holiday. right um but um, so so the new year um, for them, it, October 31st, it would also signal the end of summer, the end of crop harvesting, mm -hmm. all of those mm -hmm. things. The and then, turning. right, so then the new year began in a bad way. I get the dark, dreary mm -hmm. winter. Months. That's how they refer to it. Uh -huh. um, but doesn't that say something about literally October 31st, it's going to be like 75 degrees. Yeah. There is a little something to this whole climate change thing. We've kind that, of, yeah. yeah. We, I, I think you can kind of track mm -hmm. it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 
the, so the Celts thought that the spirits from the past um, could do special things to kind of help them in the coming year. Like predict the future. Yeah, they would, they would uh, talk to the Druid priests mm -hmm. and they would um, yeah, conjure up these spirits and, and give them, uh, there, there was actually a lot of kind of fortune telling associated. We're going to get into some of that yeah, in a little bit. Sacrifices, they yeah. burn crops. Yeah, they they uh, would typically dress in animal heads and skins and attempt to tell each other's fortunes, which is just a weird thing. And then they would uh, make fires, have a sacred bonfire, and they would have extinguished the fire in their house. Mm -hmm. That we're talking 1600s here, right? Yeah, um, they would extinguish the fire in their home, and then they would. Well, maybe it was even before that, Mary. Maybe this was like super ancient. Um, well, it says over 2000 years ago. Yeah, so this was like about the time, well, probably about the time of Christ. If you look at the mm -hmm. BC AD right. um, kind of thing, um, they would, but they would take the sacred bonfire, part of it home, a coal or whatever, and build a new fire in their fireplace right from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we're going to lighten it up just a little bit and kind of go on a little <laughs> commercial kind of break here. Did you know that one quarter of the candy sold annually in the United States is sold during Halloween? That's a lot of candy. One fourth of candy sold. The Nationwide. Whole thing. I, I thought that was, I mean, a crazy little stat. So anyway. It's good for the dental. It industry, it is I exactly guess. yeah. We're making a lot of dentists and hygienists <laughs> smile right That's now. Right. That's right. Or um, cringe. When right or cringe. True. When yeah. Ready. However you look at it. Um. So then, um, the the Celts had their traditions. The Roman Empire comes in and conquers all this about forty three A D. And over the next four hundred years, they end up kind of combining some Roman things with mm -hmm. the Celtic things. Mm -hmm. And so then you have a whole new um, uh, twist. Kind of a new tradition uh -huh. or a new holiday or. Right. And the Romans, like they're, they made festivals to their gods. And one of them was the goddess of fruit and trees. And Pomona was, uh, the symbol for Pomona is an apple, mm -hmm. and that's where you're bobbing from at for apples. Comes from. Tradition comes from, right? 43 AD. It's been around for a while. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. So then uh, we're going to fast forward to 600 AD and um, talk about where they would, um, where there was a Christian martyr happening mm -hmm. and martyrs day right and so all of these kinds of other religious days are kind of getting uh, intertwined yeah and not even necessarily with november 1st right, but being established yeah being established through the year and uh then you uh go to the ninth century where christianity has spread and it kind of uh, pushes out some of the old Celtic ways. And in 1000 AD, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day, mm -hmm. where November 1st was All Saints Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the All Saints Day was focused on the spirits of the dead and All Souls mm -hmm. Day was a day to honor the dead, not to conjure their spirits up and have them tell your fortune for the coming year. And, and so it was also the church sanctioned. Yes. The, and the, the, the yeah, souls. yeah, the all souls day. So it, mm -hmm. that's, that's a different, there are two different things, especially when uh, you consider how they were uh, celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, uh, but all souls day was celebrated in a similar way with bonfires and costumes, but it was of saints or angels mm -hmm. or devils, mm -hmm. not of animals right you know you have that whole animal thing going on um and so eventually then it became the all hallows eve 
or Halloween, mm -hmm. just shorten it down, kind of combine the language oh, and together. all of that together. Right. And so, you know, we're talking, that's about 1000 AD when that kind of started and rolled into what we have now. So then Halloween comes to America. <laughs> um, so Halloween was extremely limited in the early days in of the, the colonies colonial England. Uh -huh, um, mm -hmm. because of the very rigid Protestant beliefs. And All Souls Day, the, that church, that would be the Catholic mm -hmm. church influencing and, and uh, Roman Catholic church probably influencing and taking over parts of Europe. And so, um, so the reason people moved to the United States that they were trying to escape some persecution they were experiencing from that church. And so you had the Protest the rise of Protestants, Protestantism in uh, the American colonies. Mm -hmm. Just historically speaking, that's mm -hmm. that's um, that's how all you know how all of that came to be. So um, they, uh, but they the different European groups kind of meshed with American Indians, the Native Americans, and kind of it grew into these little parties like and play parties is yeah, what they called them. Yeah, and um, they would again though share stories of the dead, tell fortunes, dance, and sing. Mm -hmm. So there's always been this little superstition attached underlying. To, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. It's all fortunes right. being told or superstitions, right. like you said. Right. So um uh second commercial break. <laughs> now we have another little tidbit to throw out there for you. This is about buying Halloween costumes for your pets. A lot of you have pets out Raise there. your hand out there if you've ever done this. My hand is up. I, I must confess. I have bought one, I think. <laughs> see, see, uh, Tina has her hand up yep. and she has two doggies. Bella and Stella. And so she's probably has <laughs> multiple. <laughs> oh, in fact, the last time I saw Bella and Stella, they were kind of dude it up. Yeah, they had their cowboy hats. Yeah. So uh, they definitely have little costumes. So Americans spent $490 million dollars on costumes for their pets in 2019. One year. <laughs> One year. I find that to be amazing. If you don't have stock in pet costumes, maybe here's it'd be, your, a, maybe it'd be a thing for you to look into. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to get back to our, our uh, the history of Halloween. So um, in the the day, you know, the U United States was new and growing, and by the middle of the 19th century, which would have been uh, the 1800s, 1850s, yeah, um, they, they had all kinds of autumn festivals and everything, but Halloween was not a celebrated holiday in the whole country. Right. Some places did, but not, not nationwide. Yeah, and then in the late 1800s, because of the um, potato famine mm -hmm. in Ireland, mm -hmm. there was a migration of Irish people to the United States and they brought with them, they were the original Celtic people. Mm -hmm. So they are descendants of all of that. And so they brought they some traditions tradition with them Halloween. and they helped popularize Halloween on a more national level. Mm -hmm. level. So um, the history of actual trick-or-treating, um, Americans would dress up, go house to house and ask for food or money. Remember trick-or-treating for UNICEF? Did you ever do that? <laughs> we used to trick-or-treat for UNICEF. We would carry the little box around and we would trick-or-treat and people would give us candy yeah. and then they'd put change in our little UNICEF box. So I can't say yeah. that one. Yep, that was a that was a thing. I just I just now remembered that. <laughs> um, so what a brilliant idea, by the way, for UNICEF to come mm -hmm. up with that as a way to get millions oh. of children yeah. involved in helping them raise money. What a smart idea. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so the trick or treat tradition began in the early nineteen, well, mid nineteen hundreds, probably. probably. Um, but this is one of my favorite. <laughs> 
Young women believed that on Halloween, they could divine the name or appearance of their future husband by doing tricks with yarn, apple parings, that means like apple peels or mirrors. So there you have it. And kind of laid in that feature telling. Yeah, that, yeah, fortune telling stuff going on. It's, it's interesting. Um, then they, uh, Americans try to uh, change over and make the it make it more of a fall festival community mm -hmm. celebrate you know kind of thing and make it a instead of pranks or witchcraft make it more into a um, just a positive and kind of uplifting right. community neighbor Event. to neighbor kind right. of thing. Um, in fact, parents were encouraged by newspapers and community leaders to take anything frightening or grotesque out out of your whole Halloween celebrations yeah yeah and then in the 20s and 30s Halloween had become a secular community-centered holiday so there it was but you know then along came vandalism yeah the trick part <laughs> of the trick, trick or of treating. treating yeah and then by the 50s they kind of made it finally communities made it into a children's right. holiday Just focused on the little kids on the kids yeah mm -hmm. being able to um celebrate it and um so the american tradition was born and today americans spend an estimated six billion, billion. Be, be. with a b six billion dollars annually on halloween making it the country's second largest commercial holiday and think about it second only to christmas christmas you're buying gifts you're you know halloween we're talking costumes and candy decorations mm -hmm. costumes decorations and candy so uh that's a lot of money it is it, i mean and i'm yeah because like you said christmas you're buying gifts for more than one person not just Mm -hmm. generally children as right, some right. families do just get the gifts for the children mm -hmm. each, more than one child right. and usually mm -hmm. along with those gifts you're talking a lot of those are high priced yeah right like well, electronics single items, you know yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. high, high, high dollar things yeah so um you know that's a lot now i mean granted parents aren't out the money on whatever santa brings right but you know just Generally kids, speaking, lots of relatives. Yeah, or and their, stuff like their that. taste yeah. has gone up in, in yeah. price recent yeah. years. Everything in this economy. Oh, well, yeah. You know, and when you're you not, I mean, talk about a trick. No, I'm just kidding. Bad trick. I'm, I'm, I'll let that go. Okay. Okay. Uh, so next, I, I'm going to talk about the scary movie tradition. That Jason going over here. She's making making me squirm. Okay, so commercial successes associated with Halloween. The Halloween movies began in 1978. Um, I just watched the original Halloween movie this weekend. I think we're gonna watch the it was newest the Halloween uh -huh. Kills. Yeah, I saw that one this weekend also. So mm -hmm. I went to the very first one and then the very last one, which by the way, this new one, Halloween Kills, the 12th movie in that series. And, and it has some of the originals in it. Yes, it does actually. Um, well, Jamie Lee Curtis. And Nick Castle. And Nick Castle, yeah. They are, um, they're, they make a comeback in this one. Um, but anyway, uh, this, if you're not familiar, with the Halloween movies, you should be. It's it's, it's they're my, not they're not award winning films. You but, can usually predict what's going to happen. Yeah, but they are absolutely scary and great. Just lore. It's one of those just iconic. Yes, iconic. Exactly. Yeah, Michael I mean, Myers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, with the weird rubber mask. Not the Jason mask. Not the mm -hmm. hockey mask. Yeah. Um, so, and just so you know, it, it was the first one, mm -hmm. okay? It's the original. Um, and it inspired the movies like Scream, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday, Friday the, the 13th, 13th. Which is the hockey oh, mask. Yeah, which is the Jason <laughs> movies. Um, so which anyway. Which also are, family-friendly movies. Well, like that's focus. Yeah. And 
my favorite of all time has to be Beetlejuice, which I had a shirt that I was going to wear today. Yes. It says Beetlejuice, those Beetlejuice, 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 but yeah, I'll have to save it for another day. That one, that one's good. And what you can't forget the great pumpkin chart. Charlie oh, Brown is the great. That's a such a I love that one too. That's just always patch. something reminiscent about hearing that coming on till on television. Mm -hmm. It reminds you of your childhood. Yes, because you'd all sit down after mm -hmm. dinner and watch it together, or we would anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. That's what we sound like to y'all. Might probably be right about now. Okay. So here are the great Halloween matchmaking and lesser known rituals. Here we go. You ready? This this is the information you've been waiting for right <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. This is it. Mm -hmm. So in the 18th century, in 18th century Ireland, a matchmaking cook might bury a ring in her mashed potatoes on Halloween night, hoping to bring two love, true love to the diner who finds it. And you better hope that's a ring of substance that uh -huh. doesn't accidentally get swallowed. Oh. And that person doesn't choke. Right. I don't think they're going to say yes. If right. They choke. Yeah. What's that second one there? Mr. In Scotland, fortune tellers recommended that an eligible young woman name a hazelnut for each of her suitors and then toss the nuts into the fireplace. The nut that burned to ashes rather than popping or exploding, as the story went, represented the girl's future husband. But in some versions, it says the opposite was true. The nut that burned away symbolized a love that would not last. So you could probably just interpret that however you <laughs> right. really wanted. We're guessing if the hazelnut burned to ashes and your true love didn't work out that year, then the next year you go with one of the ones that explodes. Mm -hmm. You just follow that's, whichever way. Yeah, that's what we think <laughs> probably was the outcome of that little test. There you go. Yeah. So one way or another, you're bound to meet someone, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> another tale had it if a young woman ate a sugary concoction made of, write this recipe down, <laughs> hazelnuts, walnuts, and nutmeg before bed on Halloween, she would dream about her future husband. That sounds like a Hallmark movie. It does. It does. I think that was adapted into a Hallmark movie. The, the, <laughs> the nuts before Halloween. The nut before Halloween. <laughs> that's it uh -huh. instead of the night before Halloween yeah and then young women would toss apple peels over their shoulders hoping that the peels would fall on the floor in the shape of their future husband's initials and then tried to learn about their futures by peering at egg yolks floating in a bowl of water and stood in front of mirrors in darker rooms <laughs> Holding candles and looking over their shoulders for their husband's faces. I'm, I'm that's keeping kind of crazy. this one. I hope my daughter is watching Abby. I mean, I've got some. Hold the candle and look over their shoulder for their husband's face. <laughs> that would be crazy. I wish, I wish there okay. was someone standing behind If there was a mirror you, behind me with a face right now. Right? You would see Mary run. Mary doesn't run. Run, Mary, run. Because that would be freaky. <laughs> Uh, some some rituals were more competitive. At uh, some Halloween parties, the first guest to find a burr on a chestnut hunt would be the first person to marry. And at others, the first successful apple bobber would be the first down the aisle. See, there we have it, apple bobbing again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, there you have it. How competitive you wanted to get at your um, Halloween party. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, whether you invited single people or married people. <laughs> all the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> Put your yeah. hands up. Yeah. Put um, your hands up. Find a burr on a chestnut. There you go. <laughs> Just look. Walk. All that okay. apples. Okay. Like way too much. Sugar anyway, time. yeah. There's your history of Halloween. Okay. I'm yep. sure you guys are going to ask for more about all that. Sure so, will. okay. Now we're going to switch gears to our Halloween safety tips. Which we think this is very important. Yeah, this is. I mean, yeah. this isn't really, we're not <clears throat> kidding about yeah, this. Yeah, all joking aside on this part, we're going to get some serious here mm -hmm. for just a minute. So, um, you know, the pandemic, it seems to be kind of on a downward swing right now. As I mean, I know it is around here. Oklahoma, our numbers of numbers are dropping. starting to drop. Numbers yes. of new infections are dropping. And um, <clears throat> so you're wondering if it's safe for your kids to go trick or treating or take part in a, you know, a carnival or indoor setting. kind of thing. Yeah, group setting. Well, the, the CDC director, Rochelle Walensky, 
um, on September 26th said, yes, but families need to still use caution. So, um, you know, just best judgment, you, right? Best judgment. That's a good way to put it, Mary. Exactly. As a, as a parent, you just do what you feel is the best and safest for your kids. But mm -hmm. There are some just general year in, year out right. safety tips. Right. That um, as if there was no pandemic going on. Right, right. exactly. So exactly. number one is costume safety. <clears throat> um, everything needs to be fire resistant. Yes, yes, very important mm -hmm. because right here, I mean, we have the setup and it looks like we have live fire or candles lit, but in all honesty, yeah, they're not. They're not. Yeah. It's they're battery lit candles. Yeah. And so sometimes there are situations where there are open flames. Right. So. I mean, because people will, they'll put mm -hmm. candles in their jack o' lanterns. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, so yeah. you don't want to accidentally, costumes a lot of the times will drag. Mm -hmm. You don't want your kiddo's costume to catch on. Yeah. Fire. So just, you know, just be aware that if children are out after dark, be sure there's reflective tape or glow sticks. We always have glow sticks. Yeah. Um, go for a non-toxic Halloween makeup over masks because mm -hmm. sometimes your vision, With even peripheral, yeah, is mm -hmm. obscured. Yes, and, but, you know, test it, make sure there's no irritation. Reaction or yeah. Uh -huh. uh, one time I painted my face with um, like acrylic paint. Oh, true out paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when I washed it off my face, everywhere the paint was, my face was red. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we painted our face like the Go-Go's, you uh, know, where uh, the Beauty uh -huh. and the Beat, where it looks like they have like cold cream on their faces, uh -huh. but it was paint. We were going to a dance, so you didn't want it coming off. So Remove test, all your makeup test. also before you go yes. to bed. Yes, for sure. Yeah, take all that off. Um, so this is a scary statistic, and I know we've been silly, and we're not always like super serious on this on Trail Talk, but Children are more than twice as likely to be hit by a car and killed on Halloween than any other day of the year. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a serious situation. Mm -hmm. If your kids are out on the streets, mm -hmm. most people are being careful drivers, but you cannot. You can't attest and you can't speak right. for everybody out there. Right. So you just need to be sure that um, your children are easily seen and that there is a responsible adult nearby. Yes. Please make sure there's lighting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how many times that you, you can drive around on Halloween and the parents are, you know, in dark clothing and the children are in dark mm -hmm. clothing mm -hmm. and you can't see anybody until you come right up on them. Right. Which and is dangerous for everybody involved. Exactly. And we're going to go heavy on the responsible adult. Yes. On this. It's on, okay. it's on you adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have older kids that you kind of let go, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like Madison's a little bit older this year, middle school age, you know, sometimes your kids are old enough that they can handle Mama walking through a neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take some uh, but, breaths. but go over your the route. Let them know in advance. Okay, you can go here, but you cannot go here or that's as far away from where I am. That guidelines and rules yeah. beforehand. Yeah, and just plan it out. Um, and make us a, a time for them to check back in all of these things make sure your child knows don't ever go into a home never or someone's car never ever um and don't stay in familiar well at air don't wander off alone mm -hmm. don't go look at someone's little kittens or puppies mm -hmm. or no. you know any of here i want to show you something mm -hmm. or come to my backyard yeah no yeah stay with your stay group. with your group group always um be sure that as a parent you check their candy mm -hmm. and uh, for food allergies and make sure everything's still wrapped nothing's opened or looks yeah mm -hmm. looks suspicious and listen if you're driving a car or if you're responsible for some kids put down your phone right there is no reason for you to be distracted by something on your phone when there are kids everywhere, everywhere. on Halloween mm -hmm. or, you know too if you have younger kids a lot of our activities, especially in this area, they're earlier in the evening. Mm -hmm. So plan accordingly, yeah. get your trick or treating done. And then maybe by the time it gets dark, you're already at home. Yeah, you know? that's, yeah, that is, that's good, good advice. And listen, new and experienced drivers are, it's probably not the, uh, the best night for them to be out. No, because streets are around here anyway. Yeah. Streets are full. Um, there's people 
on foot, there's people on golf carts, there's mm -hmm. groups, big groups. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. New and inexperienced. Unless drivers, you have you guys, to be out, don't be out. Right. Right. So Mary's we have got some, 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 fun, some yeah, fun facts for us yeah. here. So um, I'm going to start off here. Most everything you see here and we have Halloween colors, which are typically mm -hmm. your black and orange, like mm -hmm. Edie's dressed mm -hmm. here. Um, there's a reason for that. This, it's of course the Celtic origin again. And um, black, it's the death of summer, which we spoke of mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. And the orange is the um, autumn harvest season. Oh, okay. Or like the fall colors, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. like the colors change. Yeah. 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 That makes a lot of sense. So I that's where you get the orange and the black. Yeah. I never mm -hmm. thought about that. Never knew that. And we have some candy here and then Edie has a story. Yeah. So We're good. I thought this was a fun <laughs> little map here. I'm going to just show it to you. It's probably not going to be able to be zoomed in well enough that you can read yeah, it very well, the, the lighting and everything. Yeah. But this is a fun little map that we just found online. And this shows America's favorite Halloween candy by state. So just a few here. It shows that Oklahoma, our candy is Skittles. I love me some Skittles for sure. Texas, Starburst. They I, like those. I like Starburst too. Um, looks like New Mexico is Jolly Ranchers. Colorado is Hershey Kisses. Kansas is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mm -hmm. California is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. North Dakota. Hot tamales. Yep. Now that's a good. Edie likes that one as well. Honestly, y'all, I could live in any of these states and eat their favorite candy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like my candy. Hawaii is Hershey's chocolate bar and Alaska is the Sour Patch Kids. Except maybe those. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a huge, in fact, my jaws are cramping right now just saying Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> I literally have a visceral reaction to thinking about things that are sour. And then oh. on the opposite end of that, we have worst candy states. Mm, yeah. So this is a black and orange. Here we go back to that and mm -hmm. black and orange again. By state, so we have, and well, and it's interesting on this, um, the orange states are chocolate, chocolate bars, bars, and the others are more like sweet or gummy, uh, sour, gummy, yeah, yeah, candies. So, so that kind of tells you here again, uh -huh. see the orange and black. Yeah. So, so many states, a chocolate is their least favorite. I know, which is strange to me. How can you not like chocolate? I don't. But Oklahoma wholeheartedly one of yeah circus peanuts the uh, good choice for the worst one yeah i the last time i ate a circus peanut it felt like my teeth i had somehow injected sugar into mm -hmm. my teeth <laughs> yeah it was just instant pain yeah and okay. their their texture you know so they're that bad. it's they're just All weird around. They are just weird, weird. Yeah. Colorado's their worst is black licorice, which again, I agree with. Yes. Um, however, Texas, of course, their worst is Jolly Rancher's hard candy. And I, I, I'm sorry, Texas. Like I, Mary said earlier, it's, it's the candy of the trail. That's right. We support the Jolly Rancher community here. Yeah. <laughs> So those are those are kind of nice. Yeah. Anytime you come around here, you're you're likely to find one of us with a Jolly Rancher in our yeah, mouth. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So um anyway, some other ones are Dum Dums. Uh Starburst was actually Louisiana's worst one. Uh Swedish Fish. Mm. That's another one that I have to agree with. Gotta say, yeah, you just can't, Got to say. can't get on board with those either. So yeah. It's just kind of it's did fun you, to look up these weird. Did you mention things. good and plenty? Oh no, good and plenty. Swedish fish, circus peanuts, black licorice, good and plenty. Yeah. Those things. Mm -mm. Yeah. Sorry, people. Mm -hmm. If you like them, yeah, but you can have all the ones you want. Then <laughs> that means there's gonna be that many more out there for you. Although, think about it, Mary. Somebody eats that stuff because they produce it. They are they, still making those. My yeah. grandmother, those were circus peanuts. Were her 
favorite. She always had a bag of them out of her house. And those Boston baked beans. Oh, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah, those aren't even on the list. No, but, but somebody eats all of these candies. So we are not out to offend any of you. No, we really We just aren't. personally agree with the decision that some of these states made that mm -hmm. those are the worst Halloween candy. Yeah. And there's actually these different demographics out mm -hmm. there that you can mm -hmm. just go find. Which are probably 100% accurate, too. Oh, you know they are. I mean, I'm sure you guys got your mass. You got your... Uh, Form in the mail to fill out. Right, right? exactly. Your Gallup poll. That's right. Telling right. you if you're right. uh, stop down the street and yeah. surveyed a hundred people. <laughs> exactly, or five people. You, never you know, know, yeah. Which of these candies would you mm -hmm. pick? Circus mm -hmm. peanuts or Hershey's? Yeah. I just I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't eat yeah. anything. Okay, so we have a fun book. Our friend Miss Williams who um, is a librarian at uh, Woodrow Wilson mm -hmm. Elementary School, recommended this book. Miss Williams also works here at the Heritage Center, so we feel like this and is her birthday was yesterday. Her birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday one day late, Miss Williams. There once was a dog named Oscar. You guys might not be able to see the pages very good, and if you can, I might not be able to read them. Should I move my jack-o'-lantern over and we'll go like that? There once was a dog named Oscar who was half a dog tall and a dog and a half long. That's so good colors on the pages. Because of his unusual shape and size, all the other dogs made fun of him. Wiener dog, wiener dog, they called him. They weren't very nice. And Oscar did not like it one bit. Poor Oscar. That's not nice. That's not very nice at all. Oscar's mother was no help either. Every morning when the dogs walked off to obedience school, Oscar's mother stood in the front yard waving and calling out, Farewell, my little Vienna sausage. And the other dogs laughed and laughed. I know. Yeah. Today's lesson, sit, stay. And then it says, write these sentences. This other dog's having to write sentences that said, I will not sniff my neighbor. I will not sniff my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's so Most of the time, Oscar was upset by all of this, but not today. Today was Halloween. And Oscar was thinking about other things all day long at obedience school. Oscar daydreamed about Halloween night, trick-or-treats, and scary costumes. When Oscar got home, he dashed upstairs to start working on his scary Halloween costume. But he got, when he got to his room, a surprise was waiting for him. Happy Halloween, my little sausage link, said Oscar's mother. I've made you a costume to wear for trick-or-treats. It was a giant hot dog bun, complete with mustard, and guess who was supposed to fit in the middle? Oscar did not want to hurt his mother's feelings, so he decided to wear the silly costume. Poor Oscar. I don't think he wanted to be an Oscar Mayer winner. He did not. <clears throat> and it wasn't very scary. No. That night, all the dogs on the block gathered to show off their costumes. Everyone was looking quite scary. Then Oscar showed up looking quite frank. <laughs> <laughs> when the dogs saw Oscar in his silly costume, they howled with laughter. Look at Oscar, they cried. He really is a wiener dog. Poor Oscar was so embarrassed. Wiener dog, wiener dog, laughed the other dogs as they ran off to trick or treat. Oscar tried to keep up with the dogs, but his silly costume kept slowing him down. All night long, the other dogs hounded every treat they could get their paws on. So by the time Oscar got to each house, there were no treats left. Oh, poor guy. Poor Oscar. This is not turning out to be a good story night. right now. 
Soon trick-or-treating was over and the dogs walked home past a spooky graveyard. Suddenly a horrible hissing sound filled the air. The dogs stopped de dead in their tracks. Then out of the graveyard rose a ghastly monster. The dogs screamed for their lives. They dropped their treats and jumped into a nearby pond. The monster moved closer. Please don't eat us, cried the dogs. The monster yowled and hissed. Boo, hoo, hoo, sobbed the dogs. The monster jumped up and down. Somebody save us, shrieked the dogs. Those dogs are not very brave. Just then, somebody showed up. It was Oscar. Because Oscar was so short, he saw something the other dogs had not seen. That's no monster, cried Oscar. And with a loud bark, Oscar waddled to the rescue. Oscar chomped and tugged with all his might. The monster looks like it's falling over. Rip! And there, standing in the moonlight, were a couple of ornery cats. Cats cannot be trusted. Help, cried the cats. We're being attacked by a giant frankfurter. And they ran off screaming through the graveyard. <laughs> the dogs in the pond had seen the whole thing. And now it was their turn to be embarrassed. We've been chased into a pond by a couple of cats, they moaned. But Oscar was a true friend. He leaped into the water and swam out to the dogs. Oscar's silly costume made a wonderful life raft, and the dogs climbed up. All aboard, Oscar called, and he dog paddled back to the shore. When they got back to dry land, all the dogs shared their Halloween treats with Oscar. Because Oscar had been so brave, the dogs changed his name from wiener dog to hero sandwich. And from that night on, nobody ever made fun of Oscar again. Happy Halloween. Oh, that's a good Wasn't book. Wasn't that good? The Halloweener by Dave Pilkey. Get this book for your kids. This is a fun cute. story to read. Cute, cute. Very cute book. Good recommendation, Miss Williams. Yes, thank you. Well, Mary, I think that concludes this very scary, spooky, spooky episode of Trail Talk. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be clouded by scary monsters or spooky Halloween traditions. Or weenie dogs. Or wiener dogs. <laughs> right. Anyway, guys, have a happy Halloween. You guys have a great Halloween, and we'll see you here oh, tomorrow. Yep. Sia is coming. They're bringing eagles. It's going to be a great, amazing <clears throat> episode, so be sure and join us. Nothing scary will happen tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, but uh, for now, it's time for us to say goodbye. So yeah. we'll see you later. Happy, happy trails! trails.